As the president walked to the White House lectern, it's perhaps not to over-dramatize this moment to say the world held its breath. On Mr. Trump's reaction to the Iranian missile attack overnight depended so much. As long as I'm president of the United States, Iran will never be allowed to have a nuclear weapon. Good morning. I'm pleased to inform you the American people should be extremely grateful and happy. No Americans were harmed in last night's attack. Iran appears to be standing down, which is a good thing for all parties concerned. So the world can breathe a sigh of relief, but for how much longer? We don't know, for example, whether Iran has finished its retaliation, and we don't know how the president will respond in the future. In this building behind me, there are many congressmen and women who are desperate to rein the president in, to try to make sure that in the future, decisions of peace and war don't rest with a single individual. But the Constitution doesn't give Congress much power against a president intent on conflict. Many in Congress have yet to be convinced on the president's initial decision to strike against General Soleimani, despite now having been briefed on the intelligence behind it. The facts that are before us at the moment are facts that we'll need to respond to, uh, triggered by the president's actions that many view as irresponsible. You know, Donald Trump may have been an arsonist that lit a fuse that could plunge the Middle East into a catastrophic war, though he's trying to pretend as if he's the firefighter. That's a problem. This president particularly hasn't been seen to work well with the military hierarchy. He lost his first Secretary of Defense over his withdrawal of troops from Syria and is now on his third. His arguments with his national security advisors have been frequent and fairly public. Current advisor Richard O'Brien is number six in only four years. No more violence on the board. Stop the sanctions and the war. The days when American presidents could rely on public opinion rowing behind the White House in times of conflict have long gone. In an election year, this could easily become a pivotal issue. I think a lot of Americans are weary of war, um, having been in two of them for nearly 20 years. And what they're looking to from their president is not necessarily an all-out pullback from the brink, but an explanation for why the president has ordered what he has ordered so far and what the president plans to do in the future. Uh, if he's unable to convince Americans of that, uh, public opinion will turn very quickly. President Bush saw this, President Obama saw this in certain contexts, and President Trump will as well. Article 1 is adopted. For the Democrats, there are dangers. The impeachment saga has had a mixed reaction among swing voters. Being seen to play politics with the Iran crisis could be very counterproductive, according to Kristen Horn, a party strategist who's worked extensively with moderate Democrats. Th that's when you, you, you're in danger of being seen as politicizing something. Now, I do understand that they're upset um, that there was not information, enough information given to Congress. And believe me, I do question um, the, the president's um, judgment. But I think that, you know, it's important that they, they take a look at the, the information, the facts, and, and make judgments um, and not have a knee-jerk reaction just based on political, um, you know, their political feelings. God bless America. Thank you very much. The politics of this are impossible to predict. There's plenty of uncertainty left in this drama, not least because in the middle of it all is a president who, shall we say, has a reputation for unpredictability.